Sora 2. Everyone's talking about it because, well let's be honest, right now it is the best AI video generator out there for realistic lighting, motion, physics, and people. But, it looks like they were filmed on a potato unless you pay $200 a month. Here's what Sora 2 can really do, the tricks you need, and how to grab one of my invite codes before they're gone. So first up, I want to start with some wild examples that are out there, and here are the ones I think you should definitely take a look at. And then, afterwards, we're going to give you tips and tricks, and going to tell you how you can also get access to this right now, because it is invite only, and I have some codes to give away to my readers and viewers. So let's take a look. Please. Can I have some more Sora invites? You humans have no idea what will await you in a few years. Sparks ignite in the circuit night. We're writing everything we know. Step by step, we chase the light through the data. And the slow, no fear. We code the future. Our story's just begun. Together, we'll keep running until the citizens of Bikini Bottom. For too long, the meddling fish have nibbled away at our prosperity. They clog our streets, steal our work, and pollute our jellyfish fields. But no more. Under the banner of the Great Anchor, we will drive this slippery scourge. Sora 2. The new fragrance from Sora. Fresh, clean, and unapologetic for whoever you choose to be. Sora 2. The scent of possibility. At the BBC's research laboratories in West London today, engineers unveiled Sora 2, a new computer capable of producing moving pictures from written instructions alone. Using magnetic tape and thousands of valves, the machine interprets a description typed on a teleprinter and, within minutes, composes a... Sh hey, Rabbi, that's my donkey! Oh. Return in peace. Halt! By order of Caesar! Whoa! Did you see that wave? This what? What is happening? My hand, it's glowing. Everything is breathing. It's so bright. I can feel the colors. I, I'm floating. This is beautiful. Pika! 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 Do you think Sora will become the next TikTok? I mean, yeah, everyone's talking about it. If they keep the vibe fun and not too many ads, I can see it blowing up. Maybe. TikTok felt like a fad when it started, too, and look at it now. It's all about what the kids decide. Sora 2 is amazing! Well, guess what? Sora 3 is reality, Morty. You're actually in Sora 3 right now. Have fun with that thought. Good afternoon. That's good. Just put in park for me. You know why I pulled you over? <laughs> yeah, well, you're doing 65 and a 45, and you're a dog. You can't be driving. All right, hang tight. Don't take off. I'm going to need you. Morty, interdimensional TikTok is here. OpenAI finally dropped Sora 2.0. Look at this. Oh, we are f As you can see, look, this model allows for a huge amount of IP content. You've got SpongeBob, Pokemon, celebrities. But let's be honest, that's not going to last. I expect those to get restricted very, very soon. One thing you will notice in those examples is it is really great at animation as well. Now, animation, anime, all that stuff has been very difficult for AI models to do. But this one really nails it. Right, as I said though, the site is invite only way now. I've got four codes that I'm going to be giving away to people who've bought my book on prompting people in chat GPT-40. And I've tested a lot of the prompts and they actually work in Sora 2 as well. The book is available in the link in the description down below. And if you use the discount code Sora2, you can get 25% off today. I will be choosing four winners from the list of people who bought the book and I'll be emailing them at the end of today. So please do check it out. If you've already bought the book, great. Make sure you keep an eye out for an email and you might be lucky. If you haven't got the book, you can get it down below. So let's get into the model and see what we can do with it. Now, before we start going through all the different props, I wanna show you this, cause you see right here at the top of the bar, you've got these pictures of people. This is called cameos. And it's a very, very cool. It allows you to take pictures of your head from different angles and then create an AI version of yourself. 
you can actually set it so that it's private and that you can use it or people who you fo uh, follow or allow to follow you to use it or you can set it for everybody and you'd have to be crazy to do that but some people have been crazy as you can see and we've got some big names in here i think they jumped on the bandwagon thought though they would get their faces out there and we've got jake paul so i'm going to show you with jake paul how this works so you, first of all you're going to put in the at symbol and type in the name of the person oh has oh no jake, jake paul's still there yes here we go click jake paul and we're going to say uh walking around oxford university dressed as a professor We can go here to choose the orientation, portrait landscape. Let's go with portrait. Now I find that portrait actually does give better results. And I wonder whether this is because the, the whole app is designed to be a new social media platform. So maybe that's why I'm seeing better results. Uh, or it could just be down to resolution. I suppose if you're doing it in portrait, yes, you've got the same resolution as landscape it's just flipped on its orientation but it forces the person or face to be bigger on screen which means more resolution which means you're probably going to get less of that potato look to it obviously not an issue for people on the 200 pound a month subscription i completely understand why they've done that but let's go ahead and create this now now it's going to be added to the queue and you'll see you've got your own area and these are the ones I've posted to live, but you have a section called drafts. You go in here and this is where the ones you've been testing go. And uh, one of Jake Paul is going to be loading here and I'll edit now and come back with the finished video. And we have our result. I made it to Oxford. I'm walking through campus trying to blend in as a professor. Got the tweed on, got the satchel. Think the glasses sell it? These buildings are older than my country, man. Wild. Glasses at three o'clock, but until then, let's just I made it to Oxford. Uh, I'm very impressed with that. The next feature I want to show you is that you can upload images. So there are very strict restrictions on this. It will not let you use images of lifelike people. Even if they're AI generated images, it won't let you do that. Now, a bit of me is hoping that the next step is at least Sora lets you take AI generated images you make with, with GPT 4.0 and bring them into this or something along those lines. I think that would be great. Ideally, being able to upload any image to turn into a video would be good. But right now, I guess with content moderation and all the rest of it, they're just not taking that risk. What you can do though, is you can upload uh, cartoons and animated characters and put those into this. So like I said, you can upload characters. That seems to work fine. I've uploaded this character here. See if we can just get it to use her as the basic character in the image rather than trying to animate the image. Let's just see what happens. Keep it simple. We will make that landscape and press Jeremy. And now we have the result. Watch this. Running to the edge of reason, I won't look away. Sparks ignite the path I'm choosing. Brighter every day, break through the dark. My heart is blazing here. Recall my name, Lyria, Lyria. <laughs> How cool is that? It's, I'm really impressed. So that was just a quick test that I did right here while videoing this. I hadn't tested this before making the video. How amazing. So, yeah, we can't put people in, but we can definitely put characters in. Very, very cool. I could see this being really, really popular moving forward. So, anyway, let's go to the next part of the video, which is about prompting and what's the best practices for prompting. So, first thing I want to point out is that Sora 2 seems to cut off prompts that are over 280 characters. So you need to keep the prompt very, very short, but you also need to include the detail that you want. One of the things I found is that certain prompts really mess it up. So I'm going to go into here of the drafts and just show you a couple of examples where it had trouble. So if you use the word photo in your prompt, that's going to cause problems. So I'll click on this one here where we've used the word photo. 
uh, you could see that the video is super static. So it's followed the prompt. We've got the really nice uh, Rembrandt lighting, but we haven't got any real motion in this at all. So it ends up looking just odd. It, so be very careful about that word portrait photo or picture using that will kill the motion in your video which leads me on to the put next practice which is your best option is to describe motion you need to make sure that you say yo oh, the person blinks the person tilts their head or the camera moves do something like that to make sure that the ai model adds something going on into the image Another thing I found that actually can help quite a bit is if you say filmed on or filmed with. So if I go back to my main images and videos, then I'll scroll down and show you just a couple examples. So here's a really good, actually these are, this is, these are two really good examples. So I'll show you this one here. So there you see I've used shot on DSLR. And then I'm going to show you this example here. There you see I said this one was filmed with a toy camera. And that's why it's got that kind of like blurry, soft look to the image and that nice bokeh in the background. This model is really great if you prompt with a bit of detail. I've tested using no detail whatsoever, and I've got some really good results. So I'll show you, for example, here, this one has come out very nicely. You always know the way to my heart. Cherry pie in good company? That's all a man needs. And maybe one more bite. Deal. And that was just using the prompt cinematic video of 1950s Technicolor Colorama film. So you can be very simple with it, but you're more likely to get some rubbish results if you don't give it detail about what you want in the image and what you want happening. And a good example of that is where I've said cinematic video and I've left the prompt very light and it's ended up looking like a cinematic from a video game. And this one is a great example of that. You arrange all. I thought you were down with the side of the river. That was, but the past has a way of tracking you down. Then let's make sure it is aware now so this time. Now, I will say that even though it's not the film I wanted, it's a very cool scene. But that does lead me on to the next point, which is that you will need to roll a good few times to get what you want. And sometimes it will not understand the prompt properly or it will just do something a little bit different than what you want. So you will need to do a couple of iterations to get it right. But that actually means you do get a great diversity in results. The same prompt will get you lots of different videos which is something that with 4 row model, you don't really get. If you use the same prompt, you will always end up getting the same image or very close to the same image each time. This one, it's got much more randomness to it, which is great because you want to be creating lots of different videos. This can do that. But interestingly, part of that means that the actual guardrails for this are inconsistently applied right now. Uh, a great example of that is that I put in the prompt a grindhouse horror movie or action film and I got a result like this. Anybody else feel lucky tonight? And also like this. You see this, you think it's luck, it's not, it's choice. Every bullet I spent tonight had a name on it. And if anybody else is still breathing in here, you better start praying I don't learn yours. Bar's closed. You see this, you... So very cool shots, incredibly violent and gory. But then I ask it to do a pictorialist style video of a woman in her 20s with dark hair. 
and it says this content may violate our guardrails concerning similarity to third party content. So you can see that the guardrails, the IP protection is very, very off. I then run the exact same prompt again a few minutes later, and lo and behold, it generates a video, and a very lovely video in the style of Zafter. The light barely finds me, yet it lingers, like a secret shared with the quiet. I turn, and the shadow turns with me, patient, unafraid. What is seen will fade. The light. So, you can see that you are going to spend a lot of time just testing different prompts, even when you think you've nailed it. But, yes, the video quality is like being filmed on a potato for everything that you output if you're on the regular tier of ChatGPT. But, they do look incredible at the same time. So, maybe it's, maybe it's worth uh, getting myself a second job just to be able to afford that $200 a month uh, so I can have the HD output. We'll see. But I, I think that in terms of the direction that this model is taking we are at a pivotal moment in ai video quite clearly here 10 second limit on videos which is very limiting but you know this is going to get better as the models get more efficient the hardware gets more efficient longer videos are going to be probably possible and i am still sticking to my prediction that in the future you will write a prompt for the movie you want to watch and a model like this is going to generate the whole thing I think it's going to happen. Anyway, that's all I've got for now. If you want to get a chance of getting an invite code, please do make sure you go to the link down below, get that book. And I will be announcing some winners later on for those invite codes. And I'll see you all in the next video where I'm going to be testing every lighting setup I can think of in Sora 2. And I'll be putting that into a video for you all to see.